Ahead of the breakfast, ahead of the 2023 presidential elections in Nigeria, several significant judgments have been issued by various courts across the country. In the course of the year, we'll look at the significance of these judgments. Also on the breakfast, like always, would have a sports journalist join us on the conversation. And don't forget, we'll also look through today's newspapers. We'll analyze the biggest stories on the front pages on the breakfast. We call it on the press. <clears throat> We're back with the Breakfast of Plus TV Africa. Very good morning to you. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Popo. It's good to have you join us this morning. Yes, indeed. Um, we have uh, interesting conversations for you, so we implore you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Uh, our guests are already standing by where they are getting set to come on. Uh, give us fantastic analysis. You'll enjoy it today. And uh, we can say compliments of the season to you and Merry Christmas in advance. Um, today will be the last day. Uh, we'll be here, um, I think, uh, before Christmas. Am I correct, Mercy? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yes. So uh, it's very, it's very um, okay to say Merry Christmas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Christmas is on the first of. Uh, it's on. It's on Sunday. Your pardon. Yes. It's, it's on Sunday. I have a problem <laughs> with the fests. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, it's on a Sunday. So we 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 just want to wish all of you. Um, watching this program this morning the very best of the Christmas celebration, and uh, whatever you do, please remember that there is life after the 25th uh, so we should all be just careful and uh, uh, you know um, do our little best let's uh, move on to our top training segment Messi this uh, uh, particular one uh, it's quite interesting I've been thinking about this uh, uh, this story because I've seen it uh, a number of times over the past uh, 24 to 48 hours the Argentine Central Bank uh, reportedly considering putting the face of um, uh, the football superstar Lionel Messi on Argentine banknotes. On Argentine banknotes, you can see a sample of the notes there, um, and it's quite interesting to see if this uh, will see the light <coughs> of the day. Don't forget, Argentina won the World Cup uh, last weekend, and uh, Messi was the captain of the team, and he's a global icon. He has become the face of Argentina football. Um, so Argentina's central bank is reportedly considering uh, a lot of messy banknote to commemorate this um, first World Cup they've won since 1986 in Mexico. Uh, Mexico 86, uh, Messi, I said, is the superstar of the team and the leader of that team. Uh, according to an Argentine newspaper, El Financiero, uh, the central bank of the Republic of Argentina, they say that they are eager to mark the national team's historic win in Qatar, and they've been working on working on ideas since before the epic uh, final, the 4-2 penalty win over uh, France. Um, you know, people have been creating mock-ups. You know, what we see on the screen are mock-ups. These are not the any design from the cent from that bank, Central Bank of Argentina. These are mock-ups of the 1,000 peso note being done. You know, by people on the internet and if it's gone viral fans are eager to see it in circulation um you know according to el financiero uh, they say that uh, uh, a key part of the reason behind the 1000 uh, peso bill is that it brings with it a 10 which is number uh, messi's uh, shirt number for argentina um so that's it uh from some of what we have seen how messi's face is on the front side uh the coach of the team um his name is uh scaloni but his nickname is la scalonieta uh is a wording that they're proposing to have at the back of the uh, note so it's not just about mercy but also about the coach who also guided this team to achieve uh this this feat um it's not the first time it's happened in 1978 the argentina uh, national team that won its first World Cup at home had a, a commemorative coins issued to celebrate it, uh, and that was that was what when it was done. Also, Argentina has produced uh, commemorative coins, you know, to mark the 50th anniversary of the death of the great 
first lady of that country, Eva Perion, uh, and the, that was issued some time ago. So anyway, it remains to be seen how and whether this will be done. Well, what it is, I mean, if you look at the reaction on social media, how Nigerians have reacted to this, especially those who are fans of Messi, <laughs> supporting Argentina. We saw that, you know, during the World Cup, uh, has actually played out differently. And some people are saying, oh, really? What happens to the likes of Maradona? Well, if, if you're going to have Messi, so then you need to have Maradona also. You need to have uh, the face of Maradona. But, I mean, this is the Nigerians that are actually making this comment and reacting to um, this, you know, uh, possible action by the central bank of in Argentina. But whether or not it is, one of the things that I know that it probably might vary, um, the policy or the need to have character, characters on the notes now might vary according to the country or, you know, the continent. I don't know if it's, there's any uniformity. But one of the things that I know that's very, very um, the same is that if you find out those who are on the, the characters, on the note of every currency across the globe, whether it's the dollar, whether it's the naira, whether it's the peso, whatever it is you want to call it, it's the CD. These are persons who have, you know, have some significant importance. For instance, I mean, they have contributed significantly. Maybe they're politicians or they probably would have uh, been very valid and important to the economic space of the country, politically or otherwise. For instance, if you look at the Nigerian Naira note, I'd, I'd like to bring that to comparison, is that you have the likes of uh, Tafawa Balewa, Alaji uh, Tafawa Balewa, the first prime minister of Nigeria. And, uh, of course, he was unfortunately assassinated during that uh, first military coup in Nigeria. You want to go on to the 20 Naira notes. I don't remember last time I saw 20 Naira notes, though. It's a lot. And the 10 Naira notes and the 5 Naira notes, you see. These are persons who have contributed, you know, they have uh, contributed a lot to, you know, the growth and development of the country. They've done something that's a <coughs> That's the point. And that's why they're being used. So, yes, uh, for Argentina, the reason for all of this is that, you know, the historic win of the World Cup in Qatar for 2022 because the last time that was a win was in 1986 and that was in Mexico. And so, yes, it's, it's probably valid depending on, you know, because every country has their policy and whatever it is, it probably might vary. The reason to have all of these characters on the currency, uh, I think it varies depending on the values that this country uphold and whatever it might be. But uh, some people think that, you know, Messi deserved to be on that. But if Messi does really deserve to be on, you know, the note, a character on the note, then what happens to the like of Maradona? Shouldn't he also have a space to be there? Well, that's it. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's an interesting conversation. You know, what many people say, you know, Maradona, shouldn't Maradona be on uh, the Argentine currency? Shouldn't there have been a commemorative currency to celebrate 86? I think Maradona deserves, you know, that. Really deserves that, even more than Messi, if I must be fair. Because he, he did extraordinarily uh, well. I mean, a lot of what happened in 1986 was down to the brilliance of Mar Maradona. Uh, he dragged that team across the line, even having to score a goal with his hand, you know, to secure a victory <laughs> in the semi-final against the uh, Three Lions of England, uh, just to get the ball past Peter Shilton. He had to use his hand. And that's why they used uh, the famous hand of God, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a valid point when people say, you know, that Maradona you know, should also have had something uh, especially looking at iconic status of uh, <coughs> um, Diego Armando Maradona. But let's uh, look at the, some reasons why the Argentine Central Bank will want to do something like this. Um, I think that we can, we can, apart from looking at the significance of, of the, the victory of, of Argentina and the role that Messi played, he also played a significant role. I don't think without Messi, the Argentine team would have won the World Cup because he scored two goals in the semifinals. Um, however, however, uh, he played a very significant role, but there are other reasons I, I can think of off the top of my head why this would be good. The Argentine currency has been struggling, the Argentine economy has been struggling for some time. I'm wondering if this will also be uh, sort of a shot in the arm uh, for the Argentine currency and the Argentine economy 
um, because I know that if such a commemorative, uh, be it commemorative or uh, permanent note is issued, uh, there will be a high demand for this note around the world. You know, people will want to have it and keep it in their homes, frame it, it's cause, especially fans of uh, Lionel Messi who come from all over the place. You know, uh, they want to just have it and just keep it uh, from Spain to France to even Nigeria. You have people who just want to have this. Now, if to me, if you have this uh, uh, being the case, there may be a soaring demand for this current, this Argentine currency. And if there's a soaring demand, I think the law of supply and demand kicks in um, because the value of the Argentine currency will go up. I mean, people will want to even give US dollars in exchange for just uh, 1,000 peso. So. I, I'm curious to see if this will happen, and I think if, if it does, it will be a masterstroke from the uh, Central Bank of uh, Argentina. Let's move on. Oh, well, then let's move uh, on to the next one, and the top trending is that Nigerians have taken to social media to share their experience as regard being denied visa. Uh, outside of the country, really. The Jakpa, I feel like we're actually in the era where there's uh, a lot of plans to Jakpa, all right? And so uh, a lot has actually happened. But even prior to this time, I think that a lot of persons also would have been denied visa even prior to 2022, 2020, 2021, and would have viewed there's been several experience um, about that. But, uh, you know, there's several of this comments. One, uh, uh, you, you have this tweet, especially on Twitter, uh, Dio at I underscore am me says the consular's second question for a student visa interview was, what is the closest city to your school? In my head, I was like, excuse me, sir. I never passed Ojota before. I gave some answers, but they were wrong. And he then went on to ask other things that served me blue paper. Okay. Another one said, uh, Got denied once. I didn't expect it at all because I had the money and the document. I don't even know the book hotel. I don't even book hotel. I read rejection mail like 20 times because I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, you also have another tweet saying, well, Omo, I didn't even know how to start. I was fasting the day I went to the embassy for collection and I, I see, um, say, na denier. Omo, I buy drinks straight up. No need to die, you. I know if it's die, you know? So you know how Nigerians actually go on Twitter and they respond. Some people is a combination of English and Pigeon. And so it probably might just be a lot. Uh, that was a few years ago. That you also have another tweet replying to uh, uh, this major tweet. It says, there was a f this was a few years ago. This female comedian, Chigo, they my front. As they have no giver like this, a whole celeb. I knew the inevitable was going to happen. American visa officer in Abuja, God will judge you. <laughs> well, uh, so... Celebs uh, can't rest again, you know? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of expectation, you know? Celebs, excuse me. Celebs can't rest again. Like, now, Chigo's issue has been... Uh, there is as an example. Pu ...public square. Uh, oh, my God. So, so, it's like that. Another one says... Ah, that's the LOL, laughing out loud, if you don't know already. I was denied student visa... The point I knew I was going to be denied was when I answered yes to, do you have a petition to migrate and not come back? Say, laugh. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but it's an L-M-A-O. And I could not cry physically <laughs> because, you know, you didn't understand the question. So, Nigerians have actually taken to social media to express their experience. I mean, share their experience after being denied visa. Uh, it's a lot, very comical if you ask me. Some people have, you know, taught to use that to relax and, you know, laugh about it. Well, I mean, um, we, we, we are in this country and we know what's been happening. Um, I mean, pastors use visa application f to preach, uh, to prophesy. You know, people take, they even have services, church services in this part of the world where they would say, bring your visa to church, bring your passport, sorry, to church. And uh, they would conduct special prayers, you know, to help you, um, you know, get that visa. It's a big prayer point in church services in evangelical churches. Um, and then when people get visas, it's a big testimony point. You know, they'll come to the church and, Umuchineke, praise the Lord. The, my visa has been granted. That's a testimony, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a prayer point. 
is a fasting point, is a testimony point. It shows how um, you know desperate we are in this part of the world to to emigrate, you know, to travel overseas to the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, France, Dubai, uh, the Nordic countries, you know, and etc. Um, uh, China, you know, uh, Singapore, people just Malaysia, people want to travel out. I think for me, the funny aspect of all of this is, is good. I've had some laughs looking at the comments. But um, what lies on top of my heart really, really, really is uh, sadness. Sadness because uh, when Ghana became the first African country south of the Sahara to gain independence, uh, Ghanaian uh, independence leader, uh, one of the leaders that is, and the first president, uh, uh, Dr. Osajifu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, said that it's time uh, for Africa to show the world that the black man is capable of running, is capable of running his own affairs. Uh, fast forward decades from 1957, Nigeria got independence in 1960. A lot of countries around Africa got independence. Subsequently, we have not been able to prove to the white man that the black man is capable, uh, or anybody, even to ourselves, that we're capable of running our own affairs because we've not made our countries conducive for the citizens to reside in and to say, people to even want to get a visa to come. You know, if you go out to the visa points, all these companies that help the embassies to go through these things, the queues you see, you know, people are on queue. Oh, man, 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 man. It's, 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 it's sad. Um, may God help us, you know, and bless us with, with leaders who can make African countries the envy of all eyes. Uh, I mean, I've been a strong believer in this continent. I do not know if it's going to change. Um, but we need to have a different narrative that people will be okay to stay at home. Uh, why do people travel, man? People travel for health reasons, in medical tourism, like we call it. You know, people travel for education. People travel to emigrate, just sort of leave the country for economic reasons, for work reasons. Some travel for marriage. You know, find a white woman in America who wants to marry you, you want to get married to, and she agrees. You move. That's the easiest way to get a green card these days, you know, and and so on and so forth. So, we need to develop Africa, make Africa uh, the the uh, envy of all eyes, you know. And, and what do we need? Electricity, good roads, healthcare, good education, all right, uh, peace, security, and basic development. And that's what Africans need and asking for, so that. We don't see ourselves, and sometimes when you go to these embassies, the people you see who would reject you are, some say, are their children. Well, yes, their children, fine. Swallow it, because our leaders have refused to develop our part of the world. Yeah, merci. All right. Um, so we have to move on to the next uh, story. And of course, for me, merci, you know me. When it comes to things like this, I will just tell you, you don't uh, talk about it. No, no, I, I don't say don't talk about it. I can't tell you what to do. You know, I don't say, but I will just read it and, you know, I don't tell you it's your uh, life. Uh, news, you know, social media has been a buzz and a wash with news that Basket Mouth, the Nigerian comedian, a.k.a. Bright Okpocha, has uh, separated from his wife, uh, Elsie Uzoma Okpocha, that they're getting a divorce. Uh, he put it out on his, um, his Instagram. I don't know if we can look at it. Uh, he says that uh, in the statement, as much as it pains me to bring my personal life to the public space, and this has been a topic of a discussion, should people bring their personal lives to the public space? So he said, as much as it pains me to bring my personal life to the public space, this is an unavoidable situation. After my deliberations, my wife and I have made the difficult decision to end our marriage. As we move forward separately, we will continue to work together to give our beautiful children all the care, love, guidance, support, and support they need. We humbly ask that you respect our privacy as we navigate through these times. Thank you. When they say respect our privacy, it didn't mean that people shouldn't talk about it. I don't know why they even put that, <laughs> uh, put that no, there. No, no, no. <coughs> so, for, but whether I mean, or not, um, uh, so first of all, I mean, whether or not Basket Mouth actually put out this, it will eventually become very public because people are. People are always, I mean, he's a public figure, so people get talk about it. That's the, on the one side. But um, 
this is just Basquem out, and that's very public. And we're talking about it because he's a public figure. Uh, he's in that space, and that's why it feels like, oh, yes. But there are several marriages that have actually crashed. A lot of people have walked out of their marriages, you know, several times, and are still walking out of their marriages um, for whatever reason it may. It doesn't sound as casual as a sound because in most cases, you know, um, it varies. It could just be a matter of life and death, and some people would want to have their sanity. It's, it's very um, encompassing. But I have asked of recent, and that actually also prompted me to, you know, um, sample opinion, more like I had voices, which of course is part of my podcast production. However, I, I wanted to find out what exactly could be responsible for, you know, the rate of divorce, because it's alarming. I'm not even saying, oh, it's because you have the celebrities, you know, having a divorce. No, that's not the case. Uh, we're talking about the celebrities because they are public figures and they are all already, you know, at the front bone of all of this. But p beyond celebrities, every you, you seem to have um, the rate of divorce on the high. Sampling some of these opinions, you would be shocked about, you know, about some of the responses. And some people think that this is happening because um, we're in an era where things are reported. The social media uh, era of knowledge, communication, information, we seem to be in the know. But if, I, if, if you follow the comment and the conversation surrounding Basket Mouth's announcement that he's you know, separating from his wife uh, of 12 years, uh, the marriage of 12 years, you would see some people saying, you know, the marriage of old, there was some sort of comparison with you know, those who got married uh, way back, our parents, and what's going on right now in our dispensation or this generation. And one of it is that you hear people say, well, in, during the time of old, people were very very okay women were not financially independent and that's the reason why you didn't have all of this divorce there was no exposure and what have you and some people say oh women were willing to go through a lot so you know it felt like it was a one-sided conversation well however all of these thoughts continue to go on and people continue to say oh people were willing to just you know bear the title it was just very apt really can't not say. I know that a lot of persons would be saying you have no right to talk about marriage, especially when you're not married. You know, we have all of this ideology and conversation, but what could be responsible? There are different issues, and it's really saddening because growing up as a child, what I knew was uh, a boy meet girl. It's, you know, a happy story after ever. I don't know if Hollywood also contributed uh, to all of this ideology because it felt like when two people come together, it's not going to be separable. It's going to be living very happily after. And, you know, the story will continue. But there are several reasons. And just because all of this is happening does not mean that, you know, um, we don't have beautiful marriages. The institution of marriage, a lot of people who are happily married, I don't think that this also should discourage a lot of persons who want to get married. There are beautiful marriages. People are working and some people are very happy with it. And I think that, you know, uh, we also need to understand that everything requires work. It requires commitment. The same commitment you put towards your job, your career, your business is also the same commitment you require if you're in a relationship, not a relationship expert, but of course, I'm around people who have gone through a lot. And I can say for sure that, you know, it takes two to tangle. That's the much that we can take at this point in time on Top Trending. Would we'll return definitely um, on Monday, all things being equal, with more interesting Top Trending conversation. At this point, let's take a break. And when we return, we'll be looking through the pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.